I made my own 3D printer filament from plastic water bottles at home, and it's way harder than I thought, but I did it. And I can 3D print with my old water bottles now. How? Let me show you. I heated my bottles to melt the texture off, and I made sure the caps were closed so the air could expand. And once they were smooth, I cut the tops off. And then the real test came, trying out my 3D printed bottle cutter. It worked, but not great. So it's a good thing I also bought one just in case. And this took me about 95 hours to figure out because the plastic just kept breaking on me. But the trick was to go slow and cut it on a 45 degree angle. And finally, we had strips. And see, that's the face of satisfaction. But once I had strips, I was ready to start extruding the strips through this machine that I built by hand. Just keep watching. I got my machine and my strips ready and I started attempting to push them through. I knew I was going to have to figure out how exactly I would be able to pull the melted filament out through the other end of the nozzle, but I reminded myself that we aren't burning the plastic, just getting it heated enough so that it can stretch and become a different shape. But I kept running into some issues as the filament just kept melting and I tried for a long time. I was getting a bit worried that I was never going to figure out how to melt the strips for the life of me, but with the idea in mind that we just had to trust the process, I kept trying. The problem was that I just couldn't get the filament to wrap around my mechanical pulley because it was just too hot coming out of that extruder. I thought maybe it could be the size of the strip, so I tried cutting the strips even smaller to see if they would fit in that way, and there I went, pushed it through but I just ran into the same problem. But you guys are the best and you gave me the best tip ever which was to lower the temperature and I'm telling you, I tried this for days, one by one, setting the temperature higher, lower, higher, lower, and finally, I came to the realization that the sweet spot temperature was between 75 and 80 degrees, but I just had to figure out the exact number in between so that the filament would stretch out through the other end the way it was supposed to. I was beside myself. I felt like a mad scientist who couldn't achieve anything right, but I persisted. And it didn't matter how many days or months this would take me, I was determined to figure this out so that we could 3D print from our old water bottles turned filament and save all the turtles in the world. With this epic form of recycling, the possibilities are endless for what we can print for the outdoor garden and the indoor plants. So I slept on it and woke up with a fresh mind determined to succeed. And when I woke up, I was so excited. I realized I had never had a project that excited me as much as this one other than growing plants and fruits and veggies of course. But I started the trek for the day all the way up to the summit of 3D printing from plastic waste and turned my machine on to try again. And as I was waiting for it to turn on, I started to freak out because after about 10 minutes, it wouldn't heat up. I reached yet another impasse. And I was beside myself because at this point I had come so far. I had figured out how to melt the texture off my water bottles and cut them into strips, which was already tough because it took me a while to get the strips even in width so they could fit in my machine and extrude out the other side of the nozzle as filament that I could then 3D print with. And the only thing left to figure out was getting the temperature right so that I could pull the filament right out of the nozzle with pliers. But of course, this project doesn't come without problems every step of the way because now I also had to figure out how to get my machine back in order and working again. So I proceeded to spend the next eight straight hours trying to eliminate the problem, you know, process of elimination, and that turned into four days. I'm literally doing this for eight hours at the moment of truth. Please. I basically rewired the entire thing, this diode, this heat wire, this power supply, this thermometer, this controller board. Oh my god. But there's this loop that connects these two and I noticed in the picture the eight was backwards and the way that I was looking at it was forwards and I'm like, does this thing, does it really matter if that thing is flipped or not? Maybe I tried flipping it, rewiring it, and then it came back on. And now I have to figure out if the temperature is back working up. Holy, I don't think it's working. I'll let you know though. I see the temperature here looking like it's slowly rising. This is the heat wire. I have to attach it in here. Ooh, it just touches it. I messed this up because I was taking the whole thing apart and trying to find my mistake. And then when I turn it on, I'm getting the LLL signal below. 
see, and now the temperature is just decreasing. So we have all of our plastic. And now it's just a matter of getting it right so that I can actually melt it. And I think I was able to narrow down the problem to this ceramic heat hot end red wire that fits into my square element and sends heat signals to it. And if it's not that, then it's the controller board connector wire that needs changing. And hey, I grow plants, okay? I'm not an electrician. But listen, I do finish what I start, or at least I always try to, and after four full days of trying to figure this out, I was sure that I eliminated the problem. I had to order more wires and wait, and I was upset. I literally don't know what happened. It was working perfectly on Monday, and now it's not. So, I don't know what I'm gonna do. Well, I'm gonna try to fix this. That's what I'm gonna do. So of course, not only was I becoming an electrician, but to help solve that problem, I also joined this Facebook group for others building this machine too, and I met such unbelievable acquaintances who have been so willing to help me. This is Bernard from Montreal, Canada. Hi, Jesse. Hi, everyone. I'm helping Jesse on her filament maker project as she is running into some issues. And this is Guilame from the UK. I really hope I said your name right, and I'm so sorry if I didn't. But if you're wondering how I met those individuals, and what this machine is even called. It has a name and no, I didn't make it up. It's known as the Pedimentor. There's a group of about 5,000 of us all building the same one and we communicate in a Facebook group. It's pretty awesome. And a lot of us run into similar issues that we can help each other with. There's this one guy who created the group and he has YouTube videos that you can watch to build it. Or you can just subscribe to me and I'll tell you how to build it at home next week. But my boys Bernard and Guilame both helped me to narrow down my issue and they showed me also a better thermometer for the top of my machine that'll read the temperature more accurately when I get the machine fixed and ready to melt again. And listen, it was starting to feel like a huge trek of a mountain that I was climbing, even though I could see the summit right there. So I took a break and got my first haircut in about four years and then got back to work. I was really hoping I was right about the heat wire because I ordered more and patiently waited for the next seven hours by my front door for their arrival. And let me tell you, I was losing sleep over how much finding the problem was occupying my mind. But did I fix it? Well, once the wires arrived, I sprinted to my machine and got to rewiring the red hot end heat wire. And after a few hours of work, the moment of truth for me to turn the machine back on came to see if we got the problem. This is the moment of truth. I exchanged the wire. The moment of truth came to turn the machine back on to see if we caught the problem. It didn't work. At first, I thought it wasn't working and I was stumped, but I was too eager. Wait, 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 hang on. Oh my God, guys, it's going down. Let me make sure the temp settings are good. Hot, 0.189, yes. <clears throat> As I patiently waited for another five minutes, I saw the numbers going down and down and then up and up and finally I touched the machine to see if it was hot. Is it heating? <gasps> yeah, it's definitely heating. Probably a bad idea. And what do you know? Problem eliminated. I fixed the machine and I couldn't believe it. I was so proud of myself and felt like I was learning so much along the way about a topic I had no clue about. And I realized it's honestly amazing what you can do when you set your mind to learning. Not believe that I fixed that. That took me four full days. Now I just have to get one of my neighbors to help me drill a 1.7 millimeter hole into this nozzle. This one, my old one, I can't get out of this for the life of me. I heat it. I warmed it. If you got any tips, let me know. If I could just twist this out, I could twist it into the other one, rebuild my little platform, and then turn it on and melt filament. Let me see what I can do. I'm gonna do my best to get the drill. We're back at it. We're back in action. So now that I fixed the machine, I only had one more thing I needed to do before turning my plastic into filament, which was drilling more holes in the nozzles just in case I burnt more of them out or clogged them up. I don't have a drill yet. I ordered a pink one, it's on its way, do not worry, but my neighbor in the interim stepped up to the plate. <laughs> my neighbor Mohit is here, our savior for the day. Oh. Oh. That was quick. That went. Yeah. Okay. Let's try this, maybe it's in alignment. There you go. We stand Mohit. 
And now I was ready to turn the machine back on and start the attempt at figuring out how to exactly melt the plastic properly. Okay, that says E4. That's okay though. We're not gonna rely on that so much. My thermometer still showed an error code E4, but as long as we follow the controller board temp on the bottom, we don't technically need the thermometer on the top, and I was more focused on actually figuring out how to melt the plastic and then fixing the other problems that didn't need to be fixed first. But most importantly, we were back in action, baby. It was a long day. I called it a night and woke up the next morning determined as ever to figure out the exact temperature I needed to melt successfully. I was really nervous because I did not want my filament to just melt everywhere like the first 200 hours I spent trying to melt it and I didn't want my machine to break down on me again. We are currently trying to melt some plastic. Let's see if we can get her done. So I have my filament on the pulley. Let's go to 60. If that doesn't work, then we'll go all the way up to 70. Here goes. At first, I tried what I had already tried, turning the machine on and pushing the plastic through the nozzle, where I then pulled it through the other side. And once again, that did not work. Still not hot enough. I know it was too hot when it was at 86. It's a matter of trial and error until we get the right temp. This is not easy. Now we're at 70. Now let's see if it works. Nope. Come on. Nope. Okay. Okay, now we're gonna try going up to 80. Let's see if it works. It kept melting and it wouldn't firmly stretch out the other side. I tried using different plastic material. I tried bending the plastic and then pushing it through. Oh, there it is. Okay, getting somewhere. It's melting a bit. It should be able to go right through. There we go. That gave me an inkling of hope. Go ahead. Oh, that might be a little bit too hot, but it's not coming out through the other end. So we know that 80 is too hot. I don't know why I can't get this part right. But to be honest, I just sat there for another five hours failing, accumulating a lot of little tiny balls of green and blue plastic on the floor until I knew I needed to try something different if I wanted to see the light at the end of the tunnel. Oh, see, that's too hot. And if I lower the temp, then it doesn't come out properly. Would one degree really make that much of a difference? Okay, fine, I'll put the temp up a little bit more then. Ay, ay, ay. Plus, I knew it was possible because I had seen other members of the Pedimentor group successfully do this. So I contacted Bernard. He gave me some more tips. But really, I realized that this part was really up to me to figure out all alone. Not yet the mother of turtles. <sighs> but I kept going. Oh my god, this is the best filament we've seen yet. Push, 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 go, 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 go. Get in there. And I finally figured out what I was gonna try next. Every time I think we're getting somewhere, then it just won't pull through. It's not working. I just wanna make filament. Just keep going, just keep going. Trust the process. I'm trying one last time for today, and then I give up for today. So, I thought I would try poking the plastic through the hole a different way this time. Instead of turning the machine on and then trying to melt the plastic through, I figured I'd try cutting a thin piece of plastic. See, it's so weird. That was promising. And then extruding it before I turned the machine on and once it was through, then turning the machine on so that by the time the temperature reached about 78.5, then I could seamlessly pull the plastic through the other end of the nozzle. Which, by the way, is the temp I figured out works. Okay. And that idea sounded easy, but putting it to the test was the utmost stressful part. <sighs> Guys, I have no idea what I'm doing. My fingers are hurting me. Was it gonna work? Were we gonna become the mother of all turtles? Well, I called it a night, woke up in the morning, and I was sure as heck and ready to insert this filament before heating it up and then pulling it. Let's go. And what do you know? After some trial and <clears throat> if not many, many attempts, I am a genius. 79.5 seemed to be the sweet spot. Because it worked. Just call me MacGyver. And I was having so much fun pulling it through the nozzle. Just look at that forbidden spaghetti. But seriously, this is a huge win. Let's go. But it was not over yet. Then I had to attach my filament to my pulley, which I did figure out how to successfully do, but my pulley wouldn't work properly. So I had to manually roll my filament onto my puller and I went at it for hours. I will surely get the kinks worked out in due time. And I also plan on making my machine better to optimize the automatic performance of it so I don't have to do this all by hand for hours and hours and days and days. But what felt like a victory 
a win in a pool of losses. I actually did it. I made it to the top of the mountain and the summit's view down below showed me all of the turtles that I'm about to save in the ocean. Well, I went at this for a long time until I had enough filament to see if I could print something with it. But really I took a moment to appreciate how success feels and how it feels to never give up. And slowly but surely, I had like three different pulleys of about eight different water bottles that I melted and turned into filament. So I was really nervous to actually get it in the printer and see if it would print something. I was quite literally amazed that I did this and look how good it turned out. This can literally fit right into the 3D printer. So I guess you can pretty much imagine that I sprinted about less than a meter to my 3D printer and I was a little bit nervous, okay? I'm sure you are too. <laughs> but the forbidden spaghetti was ready to be printed. I got the filament wrapped on my 3D printer pulley and inserted our fresh new plastic water bottle filament slowly into the printer. Had my STL files turned into G-code ready for the printer to print and press start. But of course, each step in this process don't come without problems because the filament it just wouldn't come out of the printer for the life of me. So now, I just have to figure out the right speed, flow rate, and temperature settings to print water bottle plastic in my 3D printer, which will probably take me another 200 hours, but you can bet your bottom that we are not giving up until we successfully print at least one turtle, and eventually I want to do something even more epic with all the water bottles I turn into filament, so if you've got any ideas of what I should do, comment below. I'm only going to choose the biggest and the best ideas, but for now, just call me the mother of all turtles in the ocean because we are saving their bums. So make sure to come back for updates, like, comment, subscribe, and remember that usually on this channel we take the seeds from inside exotic fruits and turn them into full-blown houseplants that fruit, but today, well after a few months actually, we successfully turned a plastic water bottle into filament so that we can 3D print awesome things for the indoor plants and outdoor garden, but most importantly, save all the turtly turtles. This is the most epic form of recycling and probably the coolest thing I've ever done in my entire life, so thank you you so much for being a part of this process, for believing me, for supporting me, for commenting all your loving and awesome things. It makes me really happy and I enjoyed reading them all and responding throughout the entire journey of accomplishing this. This is definitely something you can do at home. I'm so excited to see how many of us that we can get to the ultimate level of sustainability. So keep a lookout for more YouTube videos. I'm going to show how exactly to build it in the coming weeks, but I love you so much. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next week, my turtles. Thank you.